I would say, you know, avoid credit cards. Just forget about them. Uh, we're in various businesses that issue credit cards. The American public loves credit cards. But if you start revolving debt on credit cards, you're going to be paying uh, 18 or 20 percent. And you can't make progress in your financial life going around borrowing money at 18 or 20 percent. We all want to become rich. So we believe the more income we make, the faster we move out of the poor zone. But we often forget that no matter our income, it becomes useless when we begin to spend on frivolous things and don't cut our budget. This is the mistake that people make that keeps them in the poor zone. People we consider rich, like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, consciously choose where their billions go, setting themselves apart from many poor individuals. But hold on for a moment. I don't want you to think that they live a life of deprivation. Nope, quite the opposite. They actually lead a comfortable existence. The key difference lies in this deliberate approach to spending their wealth. They truly grasp the value of money and believe having high standards doesn't mean you endure a high cost of living. Of course, there's a point where these two ideas start to drift apart. I can't deny that. But it's fascinating to explore where that threshold lies. So, in this video, I'll dive deep into the 24 common expenses that tend to drain the pockets of people in the poor zone. But more importantly, I'll show you how you can change these habits. So, let's delve into the 24 things that are common money wasters for poor people. Number 1. Spending too much on real estate I, 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 I uh, decided to buy a house when it was about, when the down payment was about I live in the same house that I lived in when I was making, when I had about that. I bought it 41 years ago. I liked the house then. I like the house now. I mean, it's no secret that real estate has a knack for being valuable. Those property values just love to go up, up, up over time. So naturally, when you invest more in your house, you're hoping to ride that wave of appreciation and watch your net worth soar. Sounds pretty promising, doesn't it? But here's the thing. When you pour a significant chunk of your wealth into housing, it's like your money does a disappearing act. Instead of exploring other cool investment options like stocks and businesses, it's all tied up in real estate. Sure, your house might become a real money-making machine, but this approach puts a leash on your ability to diversify your financial portfolio and pursue other opportunities for growth and wealth accumulation. It's like going all in on one basket and hoping your eggs will play nice. And let's face it, that's not the wisest move if you wish to accumulate wealth. Number 2. Ridiculous Travel Habits Now as human beings, we've got this built-in GPS that keeps rerouting us to experiences that jazz up the daily grind. But let's hit the brakes for a moment. We all know whose wallet is on a diet when we're booking those flights. Now don't get me wrong, we definitely deserve to vacay. But like a popular saying, we've got to cut our coats according to our clothes. Number 3. Checking into 5-star hotels I mean, come on. When we're scraping the couch for change, maybe the penthouse suite isn't the most fiscally fit choice. There's a whole world out there, and life's riches isn't always in the thread count of your sheets. Sometimes it's in a weird roadside attraction and laughing so hard you snort with your friends at a campfire, or finding the best pancakes in a little town that you can't pronounce. So, we've got to be financially smart and not max out our income. Number 4. Food Waste An average American household wastes $20,000 per year on food that simply gets discarded. That's hard-earned money going down the drain, quite literally. It's money that could have been invested. This unnecessary waste of food hurts wallets, and it's a pressing issue that demands attention and attraction. By becoming more mindful of our purchasing habits, planning meals effectively, and finding creative ways to utilize leftovers, we can save a chunk of that money. Number 5. Taxes That the wealthy are definitely undertaxed relative uh, to the general population. Poor people pay more taxes because they aren't creating the same level of value in the marketplace as the wealthy. Love it or hate it, that's just how things are. In the U.S., the rich have leveraged their wealth to generate more value, and the state rewards them accordingly. Here's something that always surprises me. 
the sheer joy people display when they receive their tax returns and get some money back. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have that extra cash in hand, but let's not forget that it was already yours to begin with. The state is basically just returning what you overpaid. And guess what? By letting the state hold on to your money, you've essentially been robbed. Why? Well, that extra money you've handed over doesn't earn any interest while it's sitting in the state's coffers. Imagine if you had been smarter with your finances and held on to that money yourself. You could have had more in your pocket right now after investing instead of giving it away for free to the state. Number 6. Saving Money in a Bank Isn't it crazy how quickly society is changing? The old school lessons about saving money just don't cut it anymore. It's all about getting savvy with the basics of putting your money to work for you instead of letting it sit idle in a bank and slowly dwindle away. I mean, think about it. When you deposit your hard-earned money into the bank, you're hit with a commission. And guess what? When you want your own money back, they slap you with another commission. It's like a double whammy. Number 7. Bank Interest Rates Oh, and let's talk about interest rates. They can be downright laughable, right? Sometimes they don't even keep up with inflation. So, essentially, by putting your money in the bank, especially in a volatile economy, you're losing out on both the short-term and long-term gains. It's time to adapt and make your money work smarter, not harder. Number 8. Games and In-App Purchases 70% of Fortnite players actually spend money within the game. And get this, the average amount that these people spend on digital items in Fortnite alone is $84.67. That's no small change. So it's worth taking a moment to reflect on how much time and money we invest in these games. Are we getting a return on our investment? It's something to consider, my friend. Number 9. Impulse Purchase I mean, you don't actually need 10 Gucci bags. Deep down, we know what the essentials in our lives truly are, the things we actually need. Everything else is just clever marketing tactics aimed at brainwashing us into thinking we can't live without a certain product, even though we only want it for a fleeting moment. It's time to learn the difference between need and the want and take control of our lives. Number 10. Credit card debt. People, uh, I, I don't, I think people should, should avoid using credit cards as, a, you know, as as a piggy bank to be raided. I, I... Credit cards are becoming incredibly popular in our society, and it seems like everyone loves them. The truth is, credit card debt is a problem that we bring upon ourselves. With the exorbitant interest rates that often come along with them, I'm talking about rates as high as 18 to 20 percent. We should steer clear of them. When you find yourself borrowing money at those sky-high rates, it becomes incredibly difficult to make any progress in your financial life. Number 11. Keeping up with appearance This is one of the most common characteristics among people in the poor zone. They often feel this pressure to keep up appearances by purchasing things that are way beyond their means. But here's the thing, it doesn't have to be that way. It's important to be realistic about our financial situation and live within our means. Instead of trying to come up with appearances, we should focus on building a solid foundation of financial stability. That way, we can break free from the poor zone and start making progress towards a more secure future. Number 12. Gym Memberships If you're not going to make the gym your second home, and you dive headfirst into a monthly fee without actually being all in in that sweat life, that membership card is just an expensive bookmark. If cash is tight and you're just not ready to commit, why not find free ways to flex those muscles? You can engage in a morning jog, a brisk walk, or an adventurous hike to get in shape. Number 13. Gambling I've had an addiction to gambling, and where they've uh, used thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars that the family needs, uh, and they just they can't get off the hook, and they, uh, they find themselves in enormous financial trouble. You know, when people say you have to spend money to make money, they're definitely not referring to lottery tickets. In the UK, 70% of the population regularly plays the lottery. That's crazy! Sometimes people get caught up in the excitement, thinking it's their lucky day, and end up leaving the casino with less money than they came. It's not to say you can't go to the casino, but before you do, 
make sure you set a budget for your gambling escapades and can truly afford to go. Number 14. Smoking Gambling also brings more habits like smoking and vaping. Let's be real here. Cigarettes don't come cheap, folks. Just think about it. On average, a pack of cigarettes can set you back several dollars. And if you're a regular smoker, that expense keeps piling up week after week, month after month. It's definitely not pocket change we're talking about. Number 15. Smoking Now, some folks might consider vaping as a more affordable alternative to smoking. And hey, it's true that the initial cost of a vaping device might be lower compared to buying a pack of cigarettes every day. But hold on a second. There are ongoing expenses to consider with vaping, too. You've got to purchase e-liquids and replacement coils regularly. And let me tell you, those costs can quickly start adding up, especially if you're on a tight budget. It's something to keep in mind. So, it's crucial to find alternatives and seek support to overcome these habits and invest in a better future. Prioritizing your health and your wallet is key. Number 16. Up-to-date gadgets when you see people who you know aren't doing so great financially, yet they go and spend ridiculous amounts of money on the latest tech every damn year, it's like, seriously? Think about it. If you're constantly replacing things because they break or become outdated, you're shelling out money for maintenance costs or the upfront cost of buying a new one. It adds up. Number 17. Cancel Unused Subscription I mean, we all love the idea of a monthly cheese party at our doorstep. And thanks to the world of the internet, signing up for subscriptions is like a never-ending candy store of options. The worst part? They slip our mind way too easy, and before we know it, we're wondering where all our cash went. Once you've got the lineup, it's decision time. Which ones stay, and which ones get the boot? Number 18. Charms You know what's ironic? How people without much money end up spending the little they have on things like Lucky Charms or stones that are supposed to bring them wealth. Seriously, wouldn't it make more sense to keep that $39 in your pocket instead of spending it on rocks? Number 19. Health Taking care of your health doesn't mean you need to spend a fortune. It's all about buying the right combination of food at the grocery store. Number 19. Ballin' in the Club you know that feeling when you're at the club popping bottles and everyone's looking at you? It feels good, right? But here's the reality check. That feeling doesn't last long when you have to go back to that low-wage 9-to-5 job for another full month just to recreate that fleeting experience for a couple of hours. Number 20. Ponzi Scheme Who doesn't love to triple a stake in a matter of days? This is one of the ways poor people lose their life savings and get stuck in the poor zone because of their get-rich-quick mentality. Number 21. Donations Charities can sometimes be seen as one of the biggest scams in the world, preying on the vulnerability of the poor. The irony is that charities often aim to support those who are less fortunate, but they fail to realize the unintended consequences of their actions. So, instead of relying solely on telethons or donating money to charities, perhaps we should explore alternative ways to make a real impact. Number 22. Television Have you ever seen a Bugatti or Ferrari advert on the television? I bet the answer is no, because they actually understand that people who can afford their services are rich people and they do not have the time to watch. Number 23. Watches when it comes to iconic figures we admire and try to follow in their footsteps to achieve success, they often sport a simple and inexpensive timepiece. Take Bill Gates, for example. He rocks a Casio Duro Analog MDV-106. Can you believe it? It's funny how sometimes we get caught up in thinking that the more expensive something is, the better it must be. But when it comes to watches, all they really need to do is tell the time. Whether it costs a whopping $100,000 or just $5, they all serve the same purpose. Number 24. Cars You know what's fascinating about buying a car? It's that from the moment you drive it off the lot, it starts losing its value. It's like a silent depreciation dance, where it can lose around 20 to 30% of its value in just the first year. Talk about a financial hit. In reality, a car can be quite the liability, 
Not only do we have to consistently spend money on repairs and servicing, but its value keeps dwindling over time. It's like a money pit that constantly demands attention and drains our hard-earned cash.